Hi. Um, uh, in this uh, little video, I'm going to be building a module uh, by another maker um, <clears throat> that I exchanged that I exchanged uh, kits with. I gave him two of my mini speaker kits, and he sent me back a bunch of uh, PCB on only modules. Uh, and this is one of them is called. I think I'm pronouncing this right, Nopsal Modular. Um, here's the website, and uh, I, I asked for a bunch of uh, his boards, but in this one we're going to build um, the Hourglass, which is uh, a, a really simple PT2399 base delay. If you don't know what the PT2399 is, it's the um, kind of a karaoke, I think it's a digital delay chip, it's basically an all-in-one chip that gives you reverb, and of course it was useful for like karaoke machines, because it's quite a, nice, a, a good effect to make people sound like they're good at singing. Let me just find, yeah here it is, Hourglass, it's a, and it's apparently a clone of uh, Benja Modular's mini delay. Fortunately, he doesn't doesn't display schematics. I quite like the schematics. Apparently, it's based on the Rennie Schmidt's PT two three nine nine delay, which is this one. It's been around for quite a while. Let's zoom out, maybe. Yeah. If you see, it's basically a, a setup. So I link to the. Let's first look at the PT two three nine nine. Date sheet. Must have a direct LCSE website. It's the data sheet. Yeah, it's just like a simple echo processor. It basically just a delay. Um, does it say what, how it achieves a delay? Uh, ADC into RAM back out of yeah. It's basically digital delay. It 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 converts it to digital with the ADC, stores it in a RAM, and then pulls it back out. It says it's just RAM, which is interesting. You don't have any access to uh, the registers. I was wondering if it might be a FIFO or something. But and does it have the filtering built in? Because eh. it has to have a filter to stop aliasing. Let me see when. So it comes in, the low pass filter in. I guess they give you an op amp, and then you just have to design the filter. Yeah, and then y you somehow design a filter. Seems like. What does AP mean? Anyway, you, you seem to pass it into a D in, I guess the, the uh, ADC D in. ADCs in here. I oh, know this is the ADC, and there's the RAM. And it comes back out here. Where does it come out? D out. CC. Hmm. I'm not that familiar with this. D in. Oh, LPF in, and where does it come back out again? Analog supply voltage reference. Amplifier one input output used as a modulated integrator for connecting capacitors. Input output. Wait, so there's two input outputs. 
So they are they separate? Are they somehow separate parts? It's not very clear. What is CC? Current control. Is that controls parameters? Yeah. It'd be interesting to go more into it, but it looks quite a muddle like be nice if they could have had this diagram with these parts down here on it. It's not that hard it's not that easy to see where the audio comes out. Well I guess it's DO. De emphasis. DO mod. Crazy. A single the PT2399 is a single chip echo processor IC utilizing CMOS technology which accepts analog audio inputs and high sample rate ADC transfer into a bitstream that stores at 44 kilobit RAM. After processing this bitstream will demodulate by DAC and low pass filter. The delayed <coughs> time is determined by the VCO and the user can change the VCO by changing the external resistance. Interesting. You can see the VCO, I mean that's straightforward. It's just not very really clear what comes, I guess D in and D O is, is the input to the output. Which is connected to low pass filter. I guess that's it. I don't know what mod means. Mod CC0. <coughs> Current control. M mod of what? I think there's a more extensive um, there's a more extensive data sheet, but I, c I won't go into this now. I, I think I'll concentrate on just doing the build. So here's the Benji modular one. It's got a schematic for it. In fact, I might make two tabs. So we have the schematic here by Benji. And then we also have. Sorry, just a minute, I'm just going to add another. see is the bomb. And we want less of this. More of this. Sorry, I should have set this up first. Okay. So if you look at the schematic, I don't know if this is going to be exactly the same, but there's audio in, there's audio in, there's some kind of feedback, so this is a summing mixer, got a little capacitor, dry out. Hmm. And then simple low pass filter here, simple buffer. Oh, it's interesting, it's, it inverts here. 
and there's just a buffer here. Huh. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's peculiar. Might make quite cool sounds. And then it feeds in here into the LPF input, gets delayed. AP1 and AP2. Interesting. It comes out here, more filtering, then wet out and repeats. Where does repeats go? Oh, repeats is um, feedback, basically. And wet. Dry and wet out. Oh, so that's the original source. It's interesting, it seems like the... Oh, I guess... Is it inverting? Yeah. So it gets inverted through here. Just buffered there. Then down here, this must be an inverting input as well. And so by the time it comes back out again, that's just a buffer, it's back in phase. I was a bit worried it was going to be out of phase. Anyway, I should just get on and build it, sorry. Um. So, I've got, I've had these for ages, probably like almost 15 years. Uh, I managed to find the parts. By the way, he didn't send me any parts. This is just, I'm just building it from what I have in stock, hopefully. Um, I need two 10Ks and one 100K. I've definitely got the two 10Ks, but my 100K I don't have. <clears throat> but I found this stereo 50K, so I can hack it into 100K by uh, putting them in series, I think. Does that work? Well, I think it depends on the pot. But I am. If you look, the delay is just used here. delay is just is just single oh the delay is just single ended here so i should be able to just dip, put the two pots in series and it would behave like a 100k pot i have to work that out first what else do i need so i should have i have the audio jacks here um I should have all these capacitors, ish. Uh, a three millimeter LED. Is that for here? Oh yeah, I've definitely got that. Uh, diode, yeah. Is that a shock key? I think it's a diode. I think it's a shock key. What is it? One eight. I think I've got something a bit like that. Header, yep. A. Oh, a bunch of pin headers, yes. 10k part, 1m. Is that just a resistor? Yeah, 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 yeah. Panel, audio jack. <coughs> Quad op amp and a 5 volt regulator. Yep. So I'll just start at the top. So I need, I'll do the fun bit first. I will do the front panel. So that's Repeats and level is 10 case. So repeats. Level. Uh, 
And then to do the pot, do I have to know which end is which? Yeah, I can see here on the trace. Focus it. Only connected at one. See, it's C two of the pads are connected. That means that's one end of the resistor, and the other pad is the other. So what I need to do is let me think. I need to draw this. Just getting some paper. So what I've got is I want to have that. But I have two of them mechanically joined. Huh. Is this going to be possible? Oh, yeah. So I have the cuts. So I've got three pins like this, or six pins like this. So if it's one, two, three, and that's one, two, three, then One, th one and three have to be connected to each other. That's that. Uh, and two and three. Oh, this is complicated. So, which ones meet? So, I need to, these top row can't go in. So I'll say, actually let's start again. So we're looking top down, and these three are going in the holes. Well, we don't want that one to go in the hole. We want this one to go into that hole. We need to solder these two together. Then we need to bring a wire that connects to this one. Yeah. That way, this is going to be this is going to sorry it's this is going to be that part these two are here and then we connect to that and that and this is already connected together under the PC board so what we need to do oops This is really hacky. This doesn't work, I can just use a 10K. I had a look at the um, diagram. It, all it means is you get less delay. Sorry, I'm going off screen. So I sold these together. OK. 
cut that. Cut this one behind as high as possible, but leaving enough so I can solder onto it. And I somehow have to bend this down without letting it touch the other one. Maybe I'll flatten a bit underneath. It's nice and flat. Then I'll solder a little tab on it. Probably use I'll use enamel wire. I've got some enamel wire. And end. Just to heat my iron up a little bit more for this. Oh, I'm off the page again. Heat this wire. You need a lot of heat to burn off the thermosoldering iron, but down again. Burn off the enamel and the enamel wire. If it's quite thick, and I've soldered a little thing underneath. Boop. Turn my iron up. Okay. Use some tweezers. Pull it round on top. Blob it on there. There we go. Now, I don't want the front pin to touch the back pin. I don't know if you can see that. When I pull this, when this pin goes into the socket, it might pull onto that one. I'm sure it'll be okay. What I might do now is just test that it works like I'm imagining. So if you see that multimeter, do ohms so if I turn it all the way clockwise I should see between here and here roughly 100k yeah because that's in mega ohms there you go that's 100k That should just be 50k. Yeah. So if I did it, I don't know, roughly halfway, I should get what? 60k. Eight k. Fifty k. Eight k. Fifty k. Oh, it's because the uh, middle pin is connected here. Right. I think that works, so... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. I'm doing this wrong. Wait. Oh, no, it is changing. Get smaller. Go to the opposite end. I should get zero. I get 50k because the center wiper isn't connected. These two should be connected. If I, yeah, if I join these two and this, I get zero. 
otherwise I get 50. Because if I'm not... Because if, if this isn't connected, then it'll be 50k and whatever it is here, which was 0k. Because this wiper has moved all over here. So that should work. It's a strange hack. I don't think you'd ever use it much because I'm um, like it's kind of a stereo jack is kind of a niche product. I think I bought them by mistake once. So it's good to use them up. Other thing is this part is um logarithmic so that I don't know if that's going to be better or worse. Oops. Tricky to get in because the pins are all strange. Three front ones in first, then push. Try and push the mounting pins in. Ugh, come on. Ugh. Why is it not going in? There we go. Forced in. Now if I just check. Yeah, so these aren't touching. So that should work. I hope. Otherwise I've caused myself loads of pain. Ideally, when building kits, you should probably just have the right parts. Jacks. Probably should send these first. Having to tack them in. Probably use a chunkier solder so I don't keep keep running out of slack. Steel soldered. Let me just double check. See, you 
you can get a probe. Here and here. No. Oh, I've put it on hold by mistake. So one way, getting 98, 99 kilo ohms. The other way, zero. Halfway, roughly. Well, not really halfway, 30 kilo ohms. Perfect. So what is our... One and R2. C R thirteen R two is ten K. one is one out. So if you don't know I have these, this cool system. It took me years to get to the stage. I have resistors in decades. This is the 10k decade. So 10k is at the front. It's my 10k. Makes it so much quicker. And this is my mega ohm section. I'm guessing this is one mega ohm. Yep. So, multimeter 10k. Focus. Okay, you can't really see the red there. I if I can change the colours up. Increase the saturation. A bit more contrast, maybe? Okay, you can kind of see the red now. <laughs> so that's one oh, 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 wait, red. See it. The white balance is off. Let me just see the white balance. Is that better? Make it nice and it's warm. Just auto. Okay. See, it's one oh 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 oh, so that's ten k. That is R two. Guessing it goes on the back. Oh, was that for the LED? And then this mega ohm is R one. Yellow for three zeros, two, one zero zero, and three zeros. And that is R1. Just here. Okay. Now we need R5. Point seven two point seven K so that's in my one K one K box two point two one K two point seven K I really don't like niche resistor values. My least favourite is things like 49.99 
like what's the point when you just to put two in series two um a hundred ones in series that's r5 but 2.7k is not a niche value that's just that's in the e12 series or is it e11 series that's no, 12 isn't it? Okay. Solve those in. Clean my iron. Solder. 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 Using two um, a stereo pot could actually have a quite good trick. You have a switch if you want to change the range, for example. Now I need C five. I thought there was two capacitors. Oh dear. No, that's an R. R R R. So it's just C five, is it? Yeah. C five. Yes. 220 nanofarads. That's my box. I have my pink box of multi layer capacitors. I hope they're going to be alright because they're. They can pick up noise. I, you know, whatever. Um, you know, multi layer capacitors can be microphonic. Uh, so C5. Two hundred twenty nanofarads. So that's two two four. Two two four. Quite large. Much do we need the LED? Let's have a look at the website. No pictures of built. What kind of LED system? system. What is it? A D1. Three millimeter LED. It doesn't even say what the color is. I'll do. I will do red. I've got that in three millimeters. I do 10k though. Change of mind, I'll use white. This should be, this might be a bit bright, but I'll just do it anyway. So, cathode. Square, I think. Just to line this up. Oh, damn, I should have aligned this up whilst I was soldering it. I can force it on. There we go. I'll get some. It's actually a good idea when you're doing 
gear rack modules to put the panel on. Put the panel on whilst you're soldering. No, um, before you solder it on, so then the alignment is perfect. It's these. And some washers, I think. known about this chip for a long time but I never really done anything with it. Um, there's a lot of hobbyist uh, guitar pedals and Eurorep modules based around it. I, have the, I can't remember what these are called, I have this handy tools. Kickstarter campaign. Oh no, I haven't done the um, headers yet. Oh, I'm sure I can solder them. Just wanted to align the LED, that was all. I quite like having the LED poking out like that. It's quite funny. You could also do it flat. I think that's right. It's the short leg is the negative, and it looks like it goes to ground here, ground, ground. Because these pots are all just, um, especially these two, are just voltage dividers to ground. Cut them. I'm not sure what this um, capacitor does. C5. I wonder if it matches up with the. How, where is it attached? It's attached in. Seems to be going to. In, coming from the input. So it's in series with the input. Oh, yeah, it's this. Right. And that's what R1 is. So these do match. Um, his the values that he's the reference designators match Benji's design, which is handy. I do like his schematic. Put these jacks on too. Oops. that fits that as well. This one. No it's not. Yes it is. It's called Rocket Sockets. I'll link it in the description. Then we need headers for these. Perhaps. How does it fit like this? Like that by the looks of it. All the components are on this side. Hmm. I would have put the components on that side. I guess they're trying to make it quite compact. I'll do a header. The other thing is if the components are on the other side you can work on it without having to disassemble it. Hopefully I've got a socket that fits. So the small ones are quite popular. Was it five? One, two, three. No, it's six. Should have sixes. One. That's a five. Get some of the six with an attached handy header. So. Okay. 
should be able to just can't see what I'm doing. Should be able to just tack it on. Sorry, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah, just tacked it on. Pack it on first, get it aligned. Don't want to heat the one I'm holding. There you go, tacked in. Need a header pin six. Then this will go like. All the way it's asynchronous, so you can, uh, not asynchronous, non rotationally symmetrical, so you definitely know which way around it goes. Oh, as you can tell, I don't really think ahead about soldering. Go. See there, soldiers. Stack is like that. I think that's right. See how it all aligns. Then I'll just solder these in. You won't be able to see because the front panel. But all I'm doing is just soldering from the side. wouldn't recommend doing it this way, I'm just doing it this way because I forgot. Here we go. Basically just sort of there, sort of there, sort of there, sort of there. Now this should just come off. There we go. So I think this part is all done. Apart from the knobs. Oops. Hmm, they seem quite close. But I mean, that's the problem with Eurorec. Not a lot of space for anything. See, look, I can't really get my finger in there, but, you know, that's how it is. You can still... Or I can get smaller caps. I don't know. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, so that's all done. Everything's soldered, I think. There's no... missing joints. So now I've got to do this. It's just all the components. So, 330N for C14. I probably am going to get some microphonic problems. I'm just using these.
334. That is C14. Fifteen nanofarads. So that's one five three. Wait a minute. One oh. One oh four is one zero. Yeah, that's 109, so it's 3, yes. My maths is not good. I need 15N, which is 153. I always doubt myself. 153. C16. Lucky these are five millimeter pitch because that's what all my capacitors are. Hundred uh, N. We need a load of those. Do we? Yes, always. So I've got. A, I have a load of those. Luckily. So that's C seventeen. C seventeen. What is it? This thirteen, fourteen. Four, seven, C seventeen, then the legs, C eight and C nine, it's going to be a bit hard. It would be nice if these were. The numbers were a bit more finessed. C4, C3, I think that says. C13, C14. I can see how this happened when you do, when you look in your CAD program, you sometimes don't quite realise that your silk screen is over pads. I still got C9. Wait, what's the one I did here? That wasn't 100 N. C9. Nine. Eight and nine. See six or six or four. Uh, 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 uh. Where is it? Oh, it can be hard to see stuff, can't it? See nine. These should be all right being multi-layer capacitors because I bet you most of them are just here for decoupling purposes. C13, C4. C13. C13. I hope you don't mind me whispering. Ah, oh, is that 13? I think there's a little note on the website. Let's check. Attention, the references are a bit confusing. C13, C11. Wait, what's this? 1920. I can, oh, I can get that. But this is C13 and C11. C3 and C4. Right, so C13, C4, there. Yeah, I always recommend looking at maybe if you're using KiCad, use the 3D Vera. C3 and C11. Ah, so they're all. All these ones at the bottom are de decoupling. I'm guessing decoupling of these two ICs. I'm not sure if I'm a massive fan of 
putting the capacitors underneath like this because they're not going to be accessible. What if I got them wrong? I'd have to remove a whole socket just to um, fix them. Or do some kind of hack where I cut the leads and then I'd have to dab them back in. And I can see there's plenty of space up here and down here that could have had capacitors. But design's always personal preference. Ah, oh, drop my soldering iron. Oh. Do these now get them out of the way so I can put the socket in but I need to continue have I got all the 100 ends C11, C3, C13, C4 so they were the last ones on the bottom now I want to move on to C1 and C2 which is 22 ow 22 microfarads I haven't planned this, so I might struggle. I should have them. Sorry, bear with me. My electrolytic capacitor game is not so hot. Uh, I just have them all chucked into one container or well, multiple containers randomly not by any sort of organization I definitely should have 22 microfarads there one microfarad 47 microfarads 10 microfarads 4.7 microfarads definitely have some This is another thing I like to round. When I'm doing designs, I try to keep to sort of 10, 100, if possible. How many do I need? And what are they for? C2 and C1. It's the same. Interesting, he's got a hundred microfarads. See C two and C one. Is it near the power? Oh yeah. Go ground diode. C2 is connected to C7, which in turn is connected to C14. What? Oh no, that's ground. I can't see where it's connected. C1 is connected to... Let's just do it with a motion meter. Because if they're just rail... If they're just rail capacitors, then they don't need to be 22 microfarads. That's ground. That's not right. Yeah, 
that's grounds. This connects to pin one of the regulators, that's input. So that should be on. Right, so that. Right, that's why it's negative, sorry. This is the positive rail, I think. Pin one is, yeah, that's the positive rail. C1 is. Because it goes to this diode, comes out. And the negative rail must be this diode, because it goes in. And the negative being, that's why it's confusing. So I don't need, I'll just put 10 microfarads in there, which I have tons of. I have these nice gold ones. C7. C7 and C18 are one microfarad. What? Be part of this. Yes. I might actually use I have one microphone. Ferret ceramics again, probably not a good idea. Whatever C7 C18, they're not polarized. Stick that in there. Again, probably shouldn't use multi-layer caps on the signal path. Oh wait, we're not finished yet. Let's try and get through these capacitors. So, C20, been an hour already. C20 is 1472. How many votes do I need? Just one. That's C20. C twenty. C nineteen. C twenty. And we need one oh three for C twenty one. Sorry, I'm just looking for it. It is running out of those. C21. That. A lot of capacitors this uh, design. I think it's the chip. And then we need 68 puffs. 
Oh, I don't have that small multi layer I have to get it's up on a high shelf. It might fall over. Yep. I have another box of generic, just um, normal mono ceramic capacitors. 68. Sixty, fifty, eighty, sixty-eight. It's one of these uh, eBay kits. That was C22. Looking for C22. Down here. Imagine that's just feedback capacitor. Take for taking away ringing. Then we need another 224. C20, no, for C5, boy there's a lot of capacitors, C5, C12, I can see C6, but where is C5? Fifteen R six C twenty C nine eight one twenty one must not forget there's some resistors on the back. I can't see C five. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I've got this one already, haven't I? C5 is the one on here. C5. And C6 is 47. Puffs. 10 puffs. By the way, puffs is what cool people say. Cool uh, engineers say. So. Just means peak of ferrets. The engineers are very cool. C6 there. The bull. Any more? One microfarad, I've done that already. And that's the end of the capacitors. Woohoo! No, I can see one. C10. What was C10? Oh. What? C10. I know, I've got confused. Oh no. Oh, I missed that out weirdly. Any more capacitors? It's C15 and C10. I must have stopped at 19 and 20. Where's 19 and 20? Oh no, I haven't done those either. 19, 10. 15 and we're C20. I'll find it. So what is that? That's two, two, 
to two. That's two, two, and two, two picofarads. So that's two point two nan nanofarads. Two, two, two. Two two one two 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 That's two 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 twos. There's three two two twos. I need four two two twos. Four two two twos. So that's C ten C nine. C9? Oh, is that the one I can't find? So there's C10. Oh, sorry, it's C19, not 9. C19, C10, C12, and C15. Well, there's 15. C12. Right there. I just missed one value out for some reason. Now I can't see any more C's. R's, 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 R's. This should be a lot faster. I've spent quite a while doing this now. Let's get those C's in. I've sold them all now. Let's go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if this bores you, you can just get to the end. see what happens when I test it. If it blows up or doesn't work. Stop counting. Any more to do? One there. Great. It takes a long time to build stuff, especially when you have a lot of different values. I'm not saying this is any fault of this design, quite a lot of it is dominated by the design of the IC. On the floor. Some nice foot spikes, and now we'll do the group resistors as fast as quick as possible. Let's do the diodes D2 and D3. Got some random shot keys here, they are. Might be the same. Can't 
can't really see. It's one. You can't see, but I can tell you it's a 1N58. 1N587. Is it? 1N587. 1N5817. Is that the same? No. 1N5819. They're practically the same though, look. Uh, 1N5817. They probably have the same data sheet. Yeah. If you look, the 7. Um, they take the same power and the same non repetitive forward current. They take the same, uh, sorry, power. They say they take the same average power, but the difference is, is it's got a lower reverse voltage. We should be alright because if you reversed it, it would be 12 volts across in reverse. So the 5.7 is just the same in our replication as the 5.9. They look the same, they behave the same. What's the forward voltage drop? At 1 amp voltage, the voltage drop is. For oh, it's a little bit different. Ah, these have slightly better forward voltage drop. Not that that matters, because the delay chip runs off five volts anyway. So yeah, and the op amp, op amp, um, probably doesn't need the full rail voltage. It'll do fine with 11 and a half volts. Well, it's probably better than 11 and a half volts because if you look, you find there should be a curve going in the opposite direction. Wait, uh, forward voltage versus forward current will be drawing way down here somewhere. At will be drop all the way down here somewhere, so the forward drop is probably going to be 100 to 200 millivolts. So not a lot at all. And as we don't ride off the rail, which is something you should never do, it's fine. Okay. Now all the resistors. I'm going to bore you with all the resistors. So 10Ks. We need 1, 2, 3, sorry, 10Ks. We need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them. Here's my junk top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cut off that. Thirteen or thirteen or four. to be careful. I just remembered I so I don't go crazy looking for it. I put a 10k here didn't I? That was R2. So don't look for R2 at the end. I've got an extra resistor up. So R13, R4.
115. I do like a load of similar values. 15 or 8 or 14. Sorry. 8. 14. Eleven, twelve, ten, and two. Eleven, twelve, Ten and not two. Ten. Not two. Chuck it on the floor. And now we need one M. Two of those. and one. Oh, uh, not again. It's one, isn't it? Yeah. Chuck that on the floor. So it's just 16. Which I believe that one. Is it the middle one? Let me just check. I remember there's a note about that. Zoom. Okay, 16 is the bottom one. You should always, when you're designing, do one last visual check all over. And now R18, 68K. I wonder why this has a pad in the middle. Where's 18? 17, 3, 19, 16, 20. Ah, oh, it's on the back. Oh no! I wouldn't have done that either. They're over each other. How are you supposed to solder that? I'm going to have to push it aside like that so the other one can. It's crazy. R5, 2.7k. K seven five C 
six. Oh no, that's it. Ah, oh, that was the one I did already. Now a hundred Ks. We need one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Whew. Six or twenty. R21 where's R20 17, 3 there's not many left now 7 oh don't say it's on here again no I've done those two already um, R20 oh shit Oh, I know. It's the funny. Can't see it. It's the middle one. There. Three, seventeen. Three and seventeen here. Oh no, have we got another funky? This is not a good way to design. You shouldn't have pads underneath bodies of other components. It's totally messy. See, I'm having to put them up a little bit. Twenty-one. And twenty-one's on the back, isn't it? See, look, this one is. I'm having to put this one around this one. Put it like that. Not good. Good at all. So messy. This should be, yeah, R7 and R19 is left. Just 20k. It's taken me an hour and a half so far. This is quite good because I don't realise how long it takes to do these things. Especially through hole, I guess. Is it 19 and 7? Yeah. And then there should be one resistor left, which is R9. R9. Is that the one that was on here? R5, R1, R2. 
Oh, I can see it. It's a 1k. Again. You see. Our mine has like another lead coming out the middle of its body. Okay, so it all together. Just doing it like this because of speed. I didn't expect this to take so long, but it has a deceptively large amount of components, mostly because of, I think, because the There has to be a lot of filtering. I've still got to put on the regulator, the 5 volt regulator, and the 5 volt regulator and the uh, power connector and the IC sockets, and then I've got to put the ICs in. And then it should be done. does make me really want to really make me miss surface mount uh, assembly you can now completely bit design and build a board without ever having to solder any components on Step on any leads. Just pull these through. What a mess. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm just going to cut a load off so I can see what's going on. Kind of expires me though. I'd quite like to try my hand at this delay chip. There's still loads of them out there. I think because of their popularity they're all the AliExpress and eBay sellers are selling them in various kits and forms. I wonder what the original chip manufacturer thinks of it. I mean they would have designed the chip to be used in products that were made in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So all this all this DIY attention probably quite small in comparison. No, I said it a million times, I do not like this. Overlapping of resistors. There must have been a way you could have put them together. I would have preferred to have vertically mounted resistors than random resistors sitting on top of each other on the back. 
I need to find two sockets. One looks like a 14 pin. The other 16? Yes. I hope this works because this video is quite long now. Definitely won't have enough time to do any troubleshooting. If it doesn't work, well, I'll have to stop and start again tomorrow. Oh god, I haven't checked. Yep, got them right over up. Solder, solder. I mean, electrically, it's probably quite good having these capacitors directly underneath like this. I mean, if they are connected, I should have the socket here. So if it goes here. Right around. Yeah, you see, see that little arrow there. It meets the arrow there. Here's my PC2399. I've no idea where I got it from. It might even be from eBay. I don't think they're fakes. Because they're a cheap chip already. Oh, oh no, I'm putting it in the wrong one. Is it U2? Yeah, it's U2. Because U1 is the op amp. Sorry. I know I'm using turned pin sockets, but I do actually prefer the other ones. It's quite hard. To, it's very easy to bend the pin over in a turned pin socket. Oh, I haven't got the 5 volt regulator in yet. I should have one just here. No, that's 12. Very clear. I'm guessing that's I'm guessing it goes that way. I can tell by it should be connected to here. Oh I can see it is yeah, and that's left is input, right is output, middle is ground. That's perfect. Bend the legs. Solder. So in theory that's done. 
in theory. Oh, need the quad. He uses a TL074. Put it down here. Have them. So in theory that should work. Put this back on here. Oh. This needs to go flat. What? Why are these? Bend this this way. How bizarre. Oh no, my caps are too big. That just fits though. <sighs> the resistor there. That's... I'm not sure why the components couldn't have been on the other side. That just about works though. Oh. It's aligned. I could double check. There's no shorts. There wouldn't be because check for shorts. use my use my Catronics breadboard thing to check it. Got power cable there. Just a smoke test. See, it doesn't blow up. Don't want it blowing up. You can tell if anything shorted with these LEDs. Got poly fuses that will sort of help, but yeah. I have a bit of current limiting on my power supply. Seems to work. Not pulling too much current. What does the LED do? Would have been nice if it had pizza on it. Well, let's see what happens when I have a little test box here. Can you see that? To try and get. A little bit fiddly. Oh, 
Wait a minute. Have to try and get a power cable in. But it's pushed right down at the back. Okay. It's quite hard to get them in. Push it in there. Here I went run out of power. Uh, this module doesn't it's too deep for the case. Go, can we see that? Just a couple of patch cables. We want audio, go to input, and input into the little speaker. Let's see if that runs. Disappear. Hmm. Wait a minute. Chips are all in. Clicking, but I'm not sure if that's can't hear anything working. Level could very well have. Oh, I can see what I've done. Oh dear. Oh dear, Ben. Oh my god, look at them. Oh, Ben. Guess what I've done? Put a chip in upside down. It feels warm. I don't know why I put that in upside down. Sorry, I'm just levering it out. I think I've got another one. How much current was going through that? Might work. If it has protection diodes, oh, that would have would have protected it. If it didn't, I'm probably have to gonna go get another one. Well, the clicking's gone. But so is the light. Because I haven't put a bucket in. Ah, oh, look, the light's actually useful. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it P. 
sheets. There we go. Amazing. The level is just the volume, isn't it? Ooh, you get a bit of noise. I think what happens is I noticed on the day sheet it said only 50k for this, but um, it's been pushed up to 100, so you get. You hear that sound? I think that's the. It's a switching noise. Quite cool though. I love. I like delays where it kind of degrades. Used to, used to do that with BVD delays as well. Bucket braid delays. Fully built. Uh, thanks to uh, Nopsel Modular for sending me this, and that's the end of the recording. That was almost two hours, Bowser. And I hope you got some interesting tips from that, um, especially how to use a uh, stereo pot to make a much larger pot. That was quite a good hack. What other hacks did I do? Uh, yeah, I wonder. Actually, no. I wonder if we get turn the level down. Too bad. Um, some if you use um, if you use multi-layer ceramics in the signal path, you can sometimes get microphonic effects. Like I was hitting it to see if it was picking up sounds. Doesn't seem to be, so it all works fine. Great. Uh, catch another boring episode next time.